Thomas Morton visited leading scientists around the world to see what can be done as antibiotics lose their effectiveness. This is his debrief. Well, we can and do synthesize new antibiotics in the lab, but there's a limit which uh, scientists hit, and it's kind of based on what they already know about the shape of antibiotics. When you're synthesizing chemicals, you're basically just rearranging atoms and molecules that, that bind up together up to a certain limit. At some point, you just run out of new combinations that actually work against the diseases you're trying to fight. Chemicals they find in the natural world, the completely new, undiscovered chemicals, will often be molecules that are so complex that you know no amount of mathematical tinkering would ever have resulted in that chemical showing up in a lab. There's just like too many complex working parts in different places, hence moving out of the lab and back into the field. Well, there's two major things that uh, the scientists doing drug discovery look for in terms of kind of the direct kind of bacterial work, like we saw in the caves. They're looking for new bacterial formations, things that they had never seen before, under the promise that something completely new may have a new beneficial compound that can be turned into a medicine. In terms of plants, they usually look for plants that look very similar to older medicinal plants, but have some minute differentiation, like a different number of leaves or like a slightly different striation pattern on the back of the leaf, which takes an extreme amount of training. I mean, just finding the plants in the first place, which are very often not the cool, crazy ghost orchids you would expect them to be, but very boring looking, like green leaf on small tree, but you have to be exceptionally well trained to be able to spot the, the tiny differences that change it from a plant that everybody knows about and that's in all the books to a completely new plant because that difference can be tiny and really hard to observe. Pharmaceutical companies do practice drug discovery and fund the research around it, but not to the level that I think a lot of people in the field would hope, and a lot less so than they used to. The, the running logic with that is the drugs we're hoping to find, like especially new classes of antibiotics, aren't extraordinarily profitable in the short term, like versus you know, obvious stuff like boner and cholesterol pills, where you just, you know, basically are printing cash as you hand out pill after pill after pill across society. Antibiotics are something that you're only supposed to need to use in pretty extreme circumstances, and then that you shouldn't have to use immediately thereafter, so there's not this, you know, recidivist buyer. There are and there have been publicity campaigns for a while trying to teach people how to use antibiotics kind of responsibly and teaching doctors how to prescribe them responsibly and monitor their patients' use of them so that they don't overtake them and help these diseases build resistance. But there's no real enforcement mechanism behind that. It largely resides on people learning, which is a slow, slow process. Both of those environments are pretty intense in the sense that if you broke your leg in either, you probably end up dying there. But in kind of overall terms, the rainforest is a much more extreme environment uh, than the cave. There's just number more elements. There's basically many more ways you could die than you could in the cave, from poisonous thing bites to drastic falls to horrible spiky plants from which you can catch you know, horrible infections to simply getting lost and uh, not knowing how to get back to a place with readily available food or water, which nearly happened to us. Basically, the only, the only two dangers in the cave are falling while coming into the cave and then the cave falling on you, which are fairly remote given the caution exercised by our caving experts and the fact that this cave hasn't had any cave-ins in its several hundred year recorded history. At the same time, I'm extremely phobically afraid of heights, and so uh, the cave was much more extreme to me personally. I kind of don't remember most of the filming because I was in a, a state of like extremely adrenalized panic the whole time. 